how will the landing process with the Mechazilla arm work? This is a question that the space community has asked as Elon Musk sets a goal to catch a super heavy booster for the first time this year. To respond, SpaceX's CEO just revealed SpaceX's wild plans to catch Starship Booster. If you have the same concern, stay tuned and find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Last year, the space community asked the question about what year would we see Mechazilla catch a super heavy booster for the first time. A prediction was given, SpaceX will attempt in 2024 and succeed in 2025. Meanwhile, the others doubted that there was no chance they'd risk the launch infrastructure next year with the tight Artemis timeline. They meant Starship was not yet reliable enough for the real landing on OLIT. However, currently everything has changed. Artemis 3 has slipped to 2026 partly due to the persistent issue on the Orion heat shield, and now it is even facing the risk of further delay if NASA has not yet to fix its own problem. This to some extent is a good thing for the SpaceX team as they will feel more comfortable in preparation for Starship's next flight tests. Thus, Elon Musk intends to land Starship in a controlled way on the ocean with the virtual tower first. If successful, this will pave the way for the actual booster catch of the Mechazilla system in Flight 5. To gear up for that, SpaceX has to undertake upgrades on the hardware. First and foremost, a successful landing requires engine precision and this poses many challenges for the Starship team. The errors on Raptor continuously appear in three of Starship's flight tests, particularly on Flight 3. Just when it seemed like success was coming, the engine faltered in the final moments. This disruption thwarted the planned deceleration process, resulting in the premature conclusion of Booster's mission well before it could touch down on the ocean's surface. To handle the problem, as usual, SpaceX usually collects data, researchers, and conducts various tests before flights, including cryogenic, static fire, and wet dress rehearsals. Flight 4 will serve as a crucial precursor to the Super Heavy Booster capture mission. Utilizing a virtual tower during this mission will allow SpaceX to evaluate the engine's performance, facilitating necessary upgrades before implementing the Mechazilla arm catch. In addition to Raptor, the grid fin also requires upgrades as it plays a pivotal role in guiding the booster back to Starbase. In Flight 3, there was an issue with the grid fin's roll control. My guess it comes from the actuator. An actuator in the context of Starship's grid fins refers to the mechanism responsible for moving or controlling the grid fins. These actuators are essentially motors that adjust the position of the grid fins in response to commands from the spacecraft's guidance and control system. By controlling the orientation of the grid fins, the actuators can influence the aerodynamic forces acting on the spacecraft, allowing it to perform precise maneuvers such as pitch, yaw, and roll adjustments during descent and landing. These maneuvers are crucial for ensuring a safe and controlled landing of the spacecraft, especially during missions where precision landing is required, such as crewed missions or cargo deliveries to specific locations on Earth or other celestial bodies. To be honest, the problem with the actuator is not new. Starship's Flight 2 was delayed once due to the replacement of the actuator on a grid fin. Mechazilla itself also needs improvement with the replacement of actuators. This upgrade aims to enhance flexibility in catching booster or Starship in the future and facilitate continuous lift up or down processes. The hydraulic actuator is used to move the chopstick arms, so for the renewal this time, many people expect that it will help the chopsticks to move faster. Another hypothesis aims to prevent bursting hoses inside the system due to overpressure. Regarding the orbital launch mount, SpaceX is implementing improvements to counteract the potential impact of a booster landing. The fuel hoses and the booster quick disconnects forward and rear covers have been replaced. This upgrade aims to bolster the OLM's resilience against the heat and pressure generated during booster lift off and landing. What's more, other critical systems, like the water deluge, protective wall, and tank farm, are also upgraded. With those upgrades, how will the launch tower catch a 70-meter or 230-foot-tall 200-ton object falling from the sky? To catch the vehicle successfully, the synchronized and smooth coordination between the captor and the captured is very crucial. Unlike landing in the Gulf of Mexico, Returning to Starbase will require more fuel for navigation and aligning the landing engine burn to facilitate accurate positioning within the Mechazilla arm. 
It's crucial to ensure that the booster doesn't run out of fuel during this process, as it could pose significant safety risks. The booster will need to slow down and mostly position itself to land slowly, catching on the chopsticks as they close. This is not unlike the Falcon 9 booster when it lands, however, there are some big differences. The Falcon 9 booster's thrust actually cannot lower its throttle enough to simply hover if it does not time its deceleration precisely with touchdown and engine shutdown. Assuming it comes to zero velocity just above the ground, it would actually start to rise, assuming it has remaining. Propellant to do this, this landing approach is called a hover slam for obvious reasons. Super Heavy can throttle down to actually hover, though it may not be able to do this for long. Early attempts may have more remaining propellant to give them more time to perform this dance, possibly with a last second abort option to divert away. Over time, it will become smoother and faster, saving propellant and improving payload efficiency. At the same time, the moving speed of the chopsticks must not be fast to adjust the appropriate time for the arms to gradually close and touch the hard point. Afterward, that pair of chopsticks must hold firmly the vehicle in mid-air while turning around and placing it onto the pad. In theory, the idea of using Mechazilla is feasible, but to test its applicability, real-life testing is required. Instead of sacrificing the actual launch complex, SpaceX plans to use a virtual tower system to simulate the Mechazilla arm during the landing process in Flight 4. Thanks to that, the booster will have a chance to practice landing steps with a primary focus on deceleration and navigation using the engine and grid fin to achieve a precise landing at the designated location. Launch towers for rockets are nothing new. NASA explains that the fixed service structure at the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Pad 39 are used for rockets like the SpaceX Falcon 9 and NASA's Space Shuttle measures around 347 feet from the ground to the top of the lightning mast. It features three swing arms for access to a shuttle placed on the pad. It's ideal for emergency exits for astronauts. But SpaceX is thinking bigger with the Mechazilla. In December 2020, Musk claimed that the firm planned to use the launch tower's arms to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returned to Earth. If the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position on the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever. The fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from the previous flight to reflight is 27 days. In 2024, Musk said that he wanted Starship to be able to fly 10 times per day. If Musk wants to build a city on Mars, he might come to depend on millions of tons of cargo. If each ship carries 200 tons to LEO per launch, that means with 10 launches per day, SpaceX can deliver 250,000 tons to Mars per opportunity. The plan using Mechazilla marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's other rocket reuse efforts. For the semi-reusable Falcon 9, the first stage booster either returns to Earth on a land-based launch pad or an autonomous drone ship in the sea. The rocket fires its engines during descent to come to a stop on the pad. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.